Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, um, as you all know, we really, really do like our frogs and toads. And as promised, we have actually got a cane toad, uh, which is in here. And we are going to rehouse that today and put that in here. Because obviously in this box, we don't ever get to see it. So I thought it's time that we actually moved her over and we had a good look at her. They really are quite special. Now, um, one other thing, actually, before we get into doing that, I'd just like to make an apology about um, our, I don't know how you put it, actually. On our videos, we, YouTube, changed the way they were doing things on the video. And before, we used to be able to place our videos with adverts, where we wanted them, how many we wanted, all that sort of thing. Then YouTube changed it all, and they took control of that system. And it was led to believe that when, when we done the videos, that YouTube will automatically place videos in appropriate places within the video. Um, and us in our being naive, we just allowed that to carry on. And... Um, we were rather shocked, actually, over Christmas. We watched a video with some family and friends, and uh, we were shocked to see how many adverts there was on this particular video. Now, we had seen a couple of people had mentioned in the past, seems to be a lot of video, a lot of um, adverts. When we looked on other videos, we were like, well, there was only two or three, you know, didn't see the problem. But then we actually saw this one at Christmas, and we were like, oh my God, how many adverts is in that video? I think there must have been like 10 adverts in a 20 minute video. It was shocking. So I can only apologize. Um, I have since gone back through our whole library of videos. And since they've changed it, some videos had no adverts whatsoever. Other videos were just every two minutes there was a video. So it was shocking. So we've actually, I went back and spent a whole evening changing all of the videos. Um, and we've redone all of them so we've taken out all of those adverts that were like just too many and i think generally on a 20 minute uh 20 minute to half an hour video we normally average what on earth was that oh we normally average three to four um adverts at the most we don't ever go any more than that um so hopefully from now on in we have taken back control of how all that works and uh you shouldn't get bombarded with adverts because who wants to watch all the adverts? We certainly don't, do we? Anyway, right. So I fully apologize for that. And hopefully we can get back to normal now. Right. We're also going to do um, some more rehouses coming up. Um, we've got we've done quite a few pairing videos. Now the weather's changed and everything else, we're going to start looking at a bit more in the way of rehouses. We've got many of our um, glass tanks that we're still using are in need of being upgraded and redone so we will get back into that because i know you guys really enjoy the uh, the the enclosure builds and things like that so we want to get on and do a bit more of that as well things are slowly getting back to normal right then so with today's little project we are going to go ahead with the cane toad the rhinella rhinellus rhin oh, how did we say this i can never remember yes rhinella murinus which is the South American cane toad. Now, these guys have got an amazing history, and um, we will go into that as we go along. What we're going to do, we're going to build this up very much like we did our bullfrog, because they're very, very similar, really, in their care and everything else. So I think we've got enough here. I can just lift this up, pour this in. So put that pop a bit of that in here. This is just our regular regular um, pot and compost. I might as well have the lot I think. It's funny, you know, every time I sit and think it'll be easier just to tip it in, it's actually harder than it was if I went the other way. So, we've got our regular potting compost. We don't need a huge amount in here. You can see this is nice and damp already. So we're literally gonna just break it up a bit. Get that in here. 
Now you'll see with this stuff, when it's damp like this, it's actually quite heavy. Ideal for this sort of thing. As it dries out, it becomes more fluffy. So we can, this is one of the reasons we like to use this stuff is because it is so um, friendly, if you like, depending on how much water content we put in there, dictates exactly how it all ends up. So it's really, really useful. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put, we're just gonna stick that straight in the corner there. Now, one of the things that we've, uh, we've noticed with this particular toad is she is very, very shy very shy so we're going to put her hide up against the back wall you'll notice the back is blacked out as well so this is all really to um, help her settle down if you like now we've got a nice piece of live moss here so we can um, where should we put that uh, I think actually what we're going to do is we're going to take her water bowl out and uh, we're going to nick her water bowl. Put that in there. And I think what we'll do is we're going to put that in this back corner. I'm going to stick that down in there. Now, these toads, they don't really use much in the way of water. So they spend the majority of their time in in a dryish environment, if you like, and then come uh, mating time, when they want to breed, that's when they come out and they'll hit the water. Very much like our European toad. The European toads that we have here will spend their whole time living under um, damp logs and things like that. Just where it's damp, nice, they will, um, they will look under and live under them sort of places. And you only ever really see them in the water when it comes down to breeding time, where they actually go to spawn. So they don't, they really don't do a lot in the water the rest of the time of the year, which is quite cool in comparison to what we want to do, because it makes their enclosures and it makes the actual general care of them much, much easier. Because as soon as you start introducing large bodies of water, it's a different scenario now as to how we're going to keep it clean and work it and all the rest of it. So having them like this is a real bonus. Keeps things very, very simple. Um, what we'll do is put this right in the corner so there's no gap there. Yeah, well, I'll stop moving around in a minute. And that'll be better, won't it? We can get in there then. There we go. That's that. There we go. Getting direction from camera lady there. We do suffer with reflections in the in the beastie room, unfortunately. So this is what we've got. We've got a very, very simple setup. You've seen it's done in literally a couple of minutes and it's and it's finished. What we're hoping for, as we said earlier on, this particular cane toad is very, very shy. So we're hoping that being in this glass enclosure up on the shelf, she will get to see things moving and going around and things like that. And she will slowly but surely become more and more confident with her surroundings and what's going on. So eventually she will spend her time outside, which would be really nice. We've already seen the difference in our um, American bull, our African bullfrog, sorry. And um, she's often out and about. Um, saying that, she sat under a log at the moment, just peering out, but she'll sit there waiting for food. Now then, here we go. This is our cane toad. Now she's been in this um, enclosure here, just while we, yeah, look, see? She's as shy as anything, and she literally dives under there, and she hides away. Now, what we'll do is we will pick her up, and we'll put her in her new enclosure, Hopefully she won't disappear underneath the log. See, she's half and half at the moment. Now, if you can see this gland here, this is a poison gland, which we see on toads. Now, the, um, the cane toad is a highly poisonous amphibian. 
really, really poisonous to the point where they are actually quite lethal to things like dogs. If a dog should eat one of these, it, there's a very good chance that dog won't survive it. So they have a very, very potent um, poison. It's not a venom, it's a poison within those glands. And when we pick these up, another defense thing that they have is they will urinate all over the place as well. So this is to put off predators. In the wild state, the, Europe, the, um, the cane toads have very, very few predators, if any at all. So they really are um, quite a unique creature. The tadpoles of these are highly toxic as well. So not even as a tadpole do they get um, affected. No one really wants them then either. You can see the size of these glands. They are huge massive. Should we put her in her new enclosure and we'll see what she looks like? You'll get a better view of her there. So what we're going to do, we are literally just going to pick her up. You can see she's not aggressive in any way. She's all right. She's very dry. Look at those lovely eyes. They have beautiful, beautiful eyes. Now you can see there also, she's puffed herself up a little bit. I say she, we're not quite sure what sex it is. But she, they puff themselves up to make themselves into the, light, into the light. Not high, though. Just... That is in the light. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Settle down. Ugh, see what I mean? You were waiting for that, weren't you? She just urinated all over me. We're going to keep hold of her there. Very, very pretty, in an ugly sort of way. Right, we're going to pop, pop her in and get to see her where she sits on this nice piece of moss. She can actually look quite smart. Go that way. There we go. So as we were saying, these, these guys are very, very toxic to anything that wants to try and eat them. So they tend to get left alone. Now, they got their name, the Cane Toad, from being introduced into the cane fields to actually eat cane beetles. And the reason for this is because cane toads have absolutely huge appetites and they will eat just about anything that moves. Anything that they can get in their mouth, they will have a go at. And um, they are ferocious feeders. They're also very unusual in the fact that they will feed on carrion as well as living things which is something that we don't see in, um, in other frogs and stuff like that. So it's very interesting how they adapt their lifestyle to, to succeed. And they've become so successful that they've been introduced around the world. There's um, very good literature um, regarding their introduction into northern Australia. Bearing in mind these come from South America. And um, they got introduced to Northern Australia to um, help with the, the beetle problem there. And, um, and just as general pest control, they are now classed as an invasive species in most of the areas that they have been introduced to, to the point where they are now an actual problem in themselves because their reproduction rate is very high. They breed quite readily and they have massive, massive spawns of eggs, thousands of eggs. And this, coupled with the fact that nothing likes to eat them, makes them a very, very competitive and successful creature. In actual fact, I think they are classed as probably the most successful living organism on the planet in terms of vertebrates. There is nothing that outclasses these guys. And they are a serious, serious problem. Now, it would be interesting to see if um, in, the, um, in, our, in the UK, you know, whether these guys could survive our winters. Northern Australia gets pretty cold over winter time, um, and they do well out there. And the same with America. You think South America, you know, it's, it's lovely and warm in the summertime, but their winters are fairly cold. So there's a, there's a high possibility that these guys could, in actual fact, survive in our UK climate here. They've been very popular pets here for many, many years. I can remember these as a small child. 
Now this one here is of not of any particular size. I've had native European toads uh, of the same size as this that we find in this country. And, um, but these can get absolutely huge where to the point where they can get to a size where this enclosure would not be anywhere near big enough. They would half fill this enclosure. They can get really, really big. And this is one of the things that's made them so, um, so popular um, in the hobby trade, purely because they are one of the easiest things to look after. Very, very simple. They're very hardy. You, there's literally nothing you can do wrong, really, in keeping one of these guys. They just live forever. Well, I say forever, about 10 to 15 years in captivity, which is a long time for an amphibian. But they are a stunning, stunning thing. Now, what we're hoping for is that being out in the open like this, uh, she's going to be um, subjected to far more going on around the room when we're working in here and things like that. We're hoping that she's just going to sit back and watch all this going on, realise that there's nothing to be afraid of, and then eventually she'll start coming out and sitting out and doing her thing. Now, when it comes to feeding-wise, because they have got such a big appetite, we want to be feeding these guys exactly the same as we do our bullfrog and our mossy frogs and things like that. We can hand feed them to some extent, just to make sure they get a couple of nice morsels, especially when we're dusting them with, um, with our vitamin dust. We can give them them by hand, and that way we know that they're getting everything that they need. But then the rest of their food, we need to let them hunt for it. And they need to get out there and chase it around and do their stuff. And by doing that, we will end up with a really healthy, fit frog or toad. So. It's very important that we make them work for their food. As we said before, we don't want a big fat toad at the end of the day. We want a healthy, strong looking thing. And these guys, when they're kept fit, they actually stand up and they, they look like they're on steroids. You know, they look like um, they're all pumped up. They're very, very strong animals. And that's what we want to try and maintain. Now, as we said before, they don't need a lot of water. We're not going to breed this particular toad anytime soon, so it doesn't need much in the way of um, a pond or anything like that. It, does, it just doesn't need a lot. So just a small thing like this, just something for it to sit in, is more than enough. Do they need water to poo? No, they will. They will poo outside of it. Bearing in mind, as we were saying earlier on, they only really go to water to breed. So the rest of the time, they're underneath damp logs and things like that, under damp moss, things. Anywhere where they can get a bit of dampness. And although saying that, these guys can tolerate it quite dry as well. So they really are an amazing creature. Absolutely fabulous. Now, we won't bother trying to feed her because she is so shy. She just, she, she probably won't feed at all. So what we do is once she's settled in, we will try and get some, some footage over the next month or so. We'll try and get some footage of her hunting. And the same with our, our um, African bullfrog as well. And perhaps do a video of the pair of them just feeding. They are really, really smart. And if you like your amphibians, these are an ideal thing to get into. If you've got children that are um, keen to learn and do things, again, these are really, really good. They're not something you want to handle, mind. Um, as we said, the, the glands, they can secrete a poison. When, when them glands are pressed, they actually um, they secrete that poison, and it's almost like a, a whitey-yellow pus that comes out of them glands. It's really quite a horrid-looking thing, but you need to put pressure on them to do that, um, which is something we're not going to do. We, we, we don't need to see that. We know what it looks like. but if they secrete that, it gets onto their hands. Onto your hands, it can be can be quite bad. Also, their skin and they urinate when they're upset. They will urinate onto your hands as well. Now, you would have seen there that I handled this one with my bare hands. As soon as we're done here, I will go and wash my hands and keep them clean. As long as I don't go sticking my fingers in my mouth now, everything will be fine. 
we're in no danger. But it is something worth worth thinking about if you're going to get one of these to for a child that's going to look after them, you know? If they're going to handle them, make sure you clean yourself afterwards or wear them sterile gloves. They're a good thing to do. Keep that stuff away from you because it can be quite nasty. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed our, our little toad. And hopefully over time, we'll actually get to see it grow into a nice, strong, strong looking individual. It's going to make a right mess of this enclosure, I'm sure. I bet it won't look like this in another week's time anyway. But we'll, we'll go back and have another look, won't we? <laughs> right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Something a little bit different. I know not all you spider keepers are really into your frogs and toads. So we've got plenty of more spiders coming along. We have actually um, paired up some of our sturmies. We've got some cracking footage of sturmy pairing um, with some very interesting things that we saw on there that I have not seen before. Um, so I was really quite shocked. So that's one to watch out for. That's a definite plus, that one. Seeing them big spiders getting it on is awe-inspiring. Absolutely amazing. Now, I've seen also a lot of you have been mentioning, oh, where's the egg sacs? Where's the egg sacs? It takes time. We've only just been pairing the last, um, oh, probably the last month or two, we've been pairing up some of our spiders. And we didn't pair nothing for the, for the best part of last year. So we're a bit behind with all of that. But these egg, case, these egg sacs will be coming. It shouldn't take too long. And uh, we'll, we'll have them on their way, hopefully. Fingers crossed if we're successful. So yeah, keep, keep an eye out for them. They will be there. Right then. Don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you all soon, guys. <laughs>